Thank you, Barbara. Thank you, Barbara. And I'm going to invite Janet up to lead us in the call to worship. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh Lord, my God, you are very great. We are clothed with honor and majesty and cover yourselves with light as with a garment. You have stretched out the heavens like a tent. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In, In wisdom, wisdom you have made them all. all. The, the earth, earth is full of your creatures. creatures. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. And now you may notice that we'll have several people up here today. And that's because it is Laity Sunday. And uh, some have responded to the call to help to lead the service today. So Jeff, if you would share with us our first hymn. Fortress is our God, our bulwark never failing. Our helper, he amid the flood of mortal ills prevailing. For still our ancient foe doth seek to work us woe. His craft and power are great, and I'm worked with cruel hate. On earth is not his equal. That word above all earthly powers, no thanks to them abideth. The Spirit and the gifts are ours through him with us our side is let goods and kindred go this mortal life also the body they may kill God's truth abideth still his kingdom is forever. And now I would like to invite Lori to begin us in our time of prayer. As one with a congregation, let us pray. Dear God, thank you for your amazing power and work in our lives. Thank you for being your goodness and for your blessings over us. 
Thank you that you are able to bring hope through even the toughest times, strengthening us for your purposes. Thank you for your great love and care. Thank you for your mercy and grace. Thank you that you are always with us and will never leave us. Thank you for your incredible sacrifice so that we might have freedom and life. Forgive us when we don't thank you enough for who you are, for all that you do, for all that you've given. Help us to set our eyes and our hearts on you afresh. Renew our spirits, fill us with your peace and joy. We love you, we need you, this day and every day. We give you praise and thanks, for you alone are worthy. Amen. Thank you, Lori. Now, as we continue in a spirit of prayer, I will ask if there are additions we need to make to our prayer list this morning. Yes. Among many others in the state, are going to be significantly short staffed. So it's a crisis situation. They're actually going to be mandating administrators for PBS to go in and do that for them. So, just concerned for everybody's safety and sanity. <laughs> safety and sanity, there are sure good prayers for state workers who uh, may not have met the state mandate for vaccination at this point. So many of them will have to be leaving their jobs um, on, um, without uh, their consent, I guess you could say, um, and will leave the uh, direct care facilities for the state in a very short staffed position. That certainly is um, a, a concern at this time. Or do we have any joys, any prayers that have been answered? Yes, Pam. Yeah. Came home, spent two days in my house <laughs> because Missy's got the dog, and um, they were much better. So I think it's a good thing that she spent those two nights at the ICU. So Hannah was in ICU for a couple of nights, spent a couple more at your house, and now she's doing better. Yeah. And she, she was on her prayer, our prayer list for. Wow. Which doesn't The COVID 15. Well, um, that's not a great way to lose weight, but uh, uh, praise God that um, that's happened. Yes, did you have a request, Dave? Oh. Okay. <laughs> So we have Larry joining us from the other room, I guess. You can celebrate the jerk you can take his restraints on for a couple hours a day. Sure. <laughs> That's a whoop whoop. Slowly get away from it. <laughs> yeah. The brace is off. Well, beginning to be off. So brace relief for Jeffrey, thank God. 
If there are no others, then let us continue in a spirit of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your presence among us. We thank you for the ways that you are touching everyone on our prayer list. We thank you for the way that you have touched those that have been able to be delivered from that. We praise and thank you for all that you are doing for us. We thank you for uh, being with Jeff and uh, giving him some relief from the brace that he's had to wear for the past few weeks. We ask that you would continue healing that back. And we thank you for Hannah's couple of nights in ICU and the, the uh, stopping of the bleeding from her tonsillectomy. And we thank you for a couple more days with grandma and, um, and that she's doing much better. And we ask for your presence, especially now with those state workers in Massachusetts who are uh, up against the deadline for getting vaccinated. So we pray that you would be with those who have not been able to. Uh, pray for those that are, are facing layoffs because of it. And we, we especially think of the disabled community in our state for the um, uh, much short staffing that they are facing and having administrators do direct care in their place. We ask for wisdom and grace for them in that task as well. So we thank you for all the ways that you are protecting us, even in the middle still of this pandemic. And we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who came to be with us and who came to live with us and die in our midst and rise again from that death and ascended into heaven to be with you, Father, as our intercessor directly with you. So we thank you that you have sent him and that he has taught us. And especially he has taught us to pray saying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And I would invite you now to bring your offerings forward and uh, invite Jeff once more to share an offertory in the garden. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and a voice I hear falling on my ear the Son of God discloses and he walks with me talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known so I'd stay in the garden with him though the night around me be falling but he bids me go through the voice of woe his voice to me is calling and he walks with me 
and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever And he's only stepping aside for a short minute as he's coming back to share our gospel today. Our gospel reading this morning is taken from the book of Mark. I'll be reading from chapter 10, verses 35 through 45. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, we are able. Then Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left, is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the 10 heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, you know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers, lord it over them and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you, but whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the son of man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. You're hearing these words, the gospel of the Lord. I'm going to stay right here. Our second hymn this morning is This is My Father's World. is my father's world and to my listening ears all nature sings and round me rings the music of the spheres this is my father's world i rest me in the thought of rocks and trees, of skies and seas, his hand the wonders wrought. This is my father's world, oh let me ne'er forget, that though the wrongs seem of so strong, God is the ruler yet. This is my Father's world, why should my heart be sad? The Lord is King, let the heavens ring, God reigns, let the earth be glad. Now reluctantly I'll give up the podium.
Yes, it is good to uh, see Jeff standing up straight after so many um, probes into the back and, and years of, of uh, pain and bending over and now, praise God, uh, a miracle has taken place and a continuing blessing. <laughs> no more cane wax? Okay. <laughs> We'll take it, I guess. So the, uh, the scripture from the Old Testament this week is again from Job. We've been exploring his story over the last few weeks. And between last week's chapter 23, when he was uh, seeking God, and now in chapter 38, we have friends of Job trying to get him to acknowledge that he is not quite as good as he makes himself out to be. They argue that his agony that he's enduring with boils from head to toe is caused by sin, either one known to him or one he has perhaps forgotten or done without knowing. They contend that his pain is the result of that sin and that something he has done has brought on the consequences that he is suffering. But Job insists that he is a man of integrity and that only God knows why he is suffering. So he keeps on seeking God but God still seems to be so far away. In today's reading, we finally see God answering Job. And God's answer is mostly questions to the seeker about God's greatness. So I'm going to read the scripture and include the sermon in it today, a little bit different than what I normally do. So I'll read a verse or two and then say something about it and continue on with another verse or two, etc. So again, it's a little bit different. So the scripture starts out, the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Think tornado here. What is a tornado? but a powerful and uncontrollable weather phenomenon. We see God in the whirlwind or tornado in many places in the Old Testament. His appearances are, um, are called in the religious um, language, a theophany or an appearance of God among men. And we see God, for example, in the story about Elijah when he was inquiring of God's um, presence of who he is and, and where he is. He responded by walking by a cave that he had directed Elijah to hide in. And when he went by, the wind was so great that it broke the rocks all up in front of the cave. Now there's a powerful presence, but that was only the beginning of God's appearance to Elijah. His, um, his final appearance to Elijah was in an eerie, silence after such a powerful walk by. The wind only served to announce God's power over the elements. And there were other prophets who named and who used the whirlwind to emphasize God's power. And I won't go into the, very, the verses in each, but there are various references in Nahum and Zechariah and in Psalms and Ezekiel and Habakkuk. 
And uh, if you need the references, I can give them to you. Uh, but we'll move on to verse 2 from Job 38, where God asks the question, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? It's almost as if God is asking Job if he even knows who he is, what he's talking about when he comes to God, thinking he can be a somewhat equal of God because of his integrity. Do you know who you are talking to, Job? Do you think you can come to me who created you and move me with your words and persuade me with your arguments? You really think you can do that, Job? And he goes on in the scripture to say, gird up your lo loins like a man. I will question you and you will declare to me, where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Okay, Job, put on your big boy pants and tell me the secret of the creation of the earth. Where is its foundation? Who determined its location in the universe? How is it held so firmly in its place in space? Why does it exist where it is? Do you know? Were you there? I was. O oh, man of integrity, I did that. Can you tell me why or how? And God continues his questioning, saying, who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched a line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy? Do you know the order in creation when this place you call home was made? Do you know why it came into being when it did? Do you know who determined its size? Do you know how important it is among all created things? Do you know of the celebrations that took place among the stars and the spiritual beings that came before the earth was created? Surely you can tell me, O oh man of integrity. And God continues, can you lift up your voice to the clouds, so that a flood of waters may cover you? Can you send forth lightnings, so that they may go and say to you, here we are? And what about how this globe operates, Job? Can you control the weather? Direct the lightning bolts to where they should go. Can you control the volume of the rain in certain places or withhold it for a time or a season? And God said, who has the wisdom to number the clouds? Or who can tilt the water skins of the heavens when the dust runs into a mass and the clods cling together? Can you, Job? call the clouds into existence? Can you determine the volume of the clouds and their water content? Or make them disappear for a time and evaporate for a season, causing drought? Can you do that, O oh man of integrity? Do you know why it happens? This is where you live. Surely you know. 
verse 36 says, who has put wisdom in the inward parts or given understanding to the mind? Do you know how or why you think unlike the lower animals? Can you answer me? Because you can interpret signs in the earth and the sky. Can you know? Because you can connect things that seem random. If you have understanding, if you have wisdom, they are a gift from me. And we haven't even reached into the environment around and life all around you. So I'll ask you this. Can you hunt the prey for the lion or satisfy the appetite of the young lions as they crouch in their dens or lie in wait in their coverts? Who provides for the raven its prey when its young ones cry to God and wander about for lack of food? Now there is a need for animals and birds and sea creatures to live and grow and die to replenish this earth that you live on. Can you know how the lion gets its food to live and grow? Can you provide the bird that flies overhead the necessary nutrition to fulfill its mission in life? Do you know how they are fed? The animals you once depended upon for your own livelihood? Where did the grain that fed your flocks come from? Do you know how all of life fits together? Tell me if you can, O oh man of integrity. O oh Job, I am God who created you. I loved you and I care for you. And I can tell you love and care for me because your desire is to be upright and moral, a man who is pleasing to your God. But you must know that I also am a being of integrity that I do what I say, and I operate in a different plane than you, but I can talk to you as long as you know who you are talking to. I may not be persuaded by your arguments, and there may be a reason for your sufferings that you cannot know and must accept because I, your God, am sovereign. The following three chapters in the book of Job continue to lay out the glory of God and God's intimate involvement in the world. And I would urge you to read them when you feel that God is far away. They will draw your attention to the God who created and is creating always and is always present in that creation in which we live, manipulating it and growing it and caring for it. You are a part of God's creation and God will never abandon you. God can be found everywhere you turn if you look hard enough. Sometimes it may be a little difficult to see him, but he's there. And now I have invited Lori to share for a few minutes her experience of the power of God in her life and I would invite anyone here that uh, would care to, uh, either in the sanctuary or on Zoom, to share a story or a 
um, an experience of the power of God in your life. So, Lori? You have to know that this is very difficult for me to come up here and explain what God has done for me. Um, I begged Jeffrey to take my place. He didn't want to do it. Um, I, I think I am more of Job, um, like Job. Um, it, my life was not something that I'd want to do again. Um, I have feelings that have over overcome my faith, seeing my son die on several occasions with his transplant at three and again when he was 30, um, having his artery cut in his back and having to go clean up his apartment to see all the blood everywhere like a horror movie. Never have I really seen God himself I mean, where was he when I was molested for eight months? Where was he when I had to satisfy a man with a blade next to my throat? I had to listen to doubt from other people as to why I should go back to school. Why should I care? Growing up, it was, why are you going to college in the first place when you have a son to take care of? Your place is at home listening to people judge me because I worked instead of caring for my children. I always found problems to a solution, always found problems and not the solution. Um, found fault with myself, anger, always looking for perfection. I often questioned God's presence in my life, lying in the hospital bed with a life-threatening DVT twice. Where was he? I have to look back though and feel that these were all tests like Job went through. It was a test of strength, a test of hope, a test of perseverance and a test of faith. Often still today, people will judge me for my actions, for my decisions, for my opinions. And I have to take a step back and say, it's me. I have broken every commandment that there is in the Bible, and I'm not afraid to admit it. But again, I think, and I've said this often enough, that God uses us to teach others how to survive. And I have to honestly say that I am a survivor despite being thrown down, despite being pushed around. I cannot remember my childhood. It is, doctors tell me that it is gone. It is suppressed in my memory because of the disasters and whatnot that have happened when I was younger. Having to move in the middle of the night, not knowing why, not knowing that my father's life was being threatened. Can't remember the good times can't remember my honeymoon with Jeffrey. It was, I'm sure, a fabulous time, but I can't remember it because there's so much hatred and guilt that I still have. But I know that God is there because I am standing here today to tell you how important he is. He is that one set of footprints in the sand. Amen. Sometimes it seems like we are alone. But surely we are not. Thank you, Lori. Is there anyone else that would like 
to have a moment to share about God's strength or God's work in your own life. I know that's a very hard story to follow up. But praise God, we are all here. We have all come through our trials and tribulations. And God has preserved us for this day. Amen. So I would invite Jeff and Janet up to share our final hymn. Are ye able? Jesus asked James and John if they were ready. And they said, we are able. And we can echo that today as we invite the Lord to be with us in our journey. And now may the God who is in heaven looking down upon us, the son who sits with him there, and intercedes for us, and the Holy Spirit who lives within us and makes the connection to heaven be with you now and forevermore. Amen. I'm going to ask Pam to share our congregational prayer for renewal. Uh, I'm not going to let you get, get away with that that quickly. O oh Lord, our God, we come to you in faith. For how else can we approach you? Your presence with us is only known 
as we trust in your provision for us, as we accept all things from your hand. Restore our faith in you as we accept that all things come from you. Help us to perceive, O oh Lord, that what seems bad to us in our experience may have a benefit for someone else. And give us the strength to endure that what seems extreme to us can be managed with your presence as we trust in you. For even our very lives are your gift to us and our days are numbered from the beginning of them. Give us the confidence to trust that you will carry out all your plans for us. In the name of your precious only son who died for us, we pray, amen. And I will add an amen as well. So now, thank you for coming today those who joined in the sanctuary and those who joined on Zoom. Ask for blessings upon all of you as you go forth this week and spread the good news wherever you are. Amen. Mm -hmm.